The warning is contained in the IISS's annual military balance survey of armed forces around the world. It comes as new U.S. President Barack Obama is expected to appeal to America's European allies to send more troops to Afghanistan in an attempt to force a strategic breakthrough. The report says Taliban insurgency has continued throughout the past 12 months, even moving into previously quiet provinces. In Afghanistan, we are entering what is probably the most critical period since 2001. The Afghanistan Compact of 2006 is in its final two years, and presidential elections are due to take place this year amid rising violence and with a government that is unable to exert its authority in the provinces. Against this background, there is a risk that it will not be possible to hold elections or voter turnout may be below the minimum necessary for the ballot even to be valid. The integrity of the whole international mission in Afghanistan is therefore very substantially at stake. The IISS report also says the ceasefire in Gaza has given a greater urgency for the need for a Middle East peace process. The Israeli war in Gaza that produced so many civilian casualties and that is now subject to a very tenuous ceasefire has both given greater urgency to the need for a Middle East peace process and made it more difficult. The impending Israeli elections and the time needed to establish a new government will of course create delays. The rise of temporary in the position of Hamas and the proportionate decline in the reputation among Palestinians of Fatah also means the division in the Palestinian leadership is even more acute. The report also expresses concern at the raised tensions between India and Pakistan following the Mumbai terror attacks in November last year. Amid looming general elections in India, there remains concern the Indian government could ratchet up the pressure on Pakistan. Although there is no sign of India's massing troops on the border with Pakistan, as happened after <coughs> the December 2001 attacks on the Indian parliament, there remains a risk of misunderstanding and miscalculation between the two nuclear armed nations, especially at a time when mutual trust is in such short supply. Another worry is that the Pakistan army would use the concern about a threat from India to move troops to the border and away from the counter-terrorism effort that has proved so costly to it. In general, these trends are discouraging because of the growing appreciation that the conflict in Afghanistan is intimately linked to the situation in Pakistan and the awareness that a decline in Pakistan's stability has a direct outcome on the prospects for any measure of success in Afghanistan. It also predicts the current global economic downturn will affect defence spending. One immediate consequence of the financial situation is a dramatic increase in public borrowing in Western countries as governments deliberately boost spending to try to breathe life into economic activity. In time, there are bound to be consequences for defence spending. In the short term, there may not be too much change because governments will be reluctant to do anything that will increase job losses. In the US, which has by far the world's largest defence budget, President Obama will be anxious to demonstrate that he is strong on issues of security and indeed he plans to carry through with increases to the size of the Army and the Marine Corps. Therefore, existing budget plans may not be subject to much immediate change, although we can expect much more discipline to be applied in drawing up supplementary budget demands to finance current deployments and there will also be serious efforts to get better value for money in defense acquisition. In the longer term, and as economic recovery gets underway, governments will be faced by the need to reduce very large budget deficits and defense spending seems bound to come under close scrutiny. It would be surprising not to see a leveling off in defense expenditure in the U.S. and the long-term trend of lower spending in Europe could be reinforced. The Institute says much will depend on the actions of the new American administration under President Barack Obama. It suggests a priority for U.S. and international diplomacy must be dealing with multiple crises around the world. It says involving Europeans and regional players effectively will require unprecedented levels of consultation in order to establish a common strategic approach.